Hey, Greg, now that you're back from vacation, you ready to get back to work? Well, I guess I'll give him a minute just to get back into the swing of things. So I've been wanting to make some new shop speakers for a while now. I have a nice set on the actual record player that I built maybe like a year ago, but out in the shop, I just have this little guy, which is a little Bluetooth speaker that I made a while back, but I took out his Bluetooth and now he's just hardwired to the stereo in the back room. So I wanted to make some bigger speakers for the shop and of course I wanted to experiment with them a bit. So I did some research on speaker building and quickly fell down a rabbit hole of sound and audio theory and tons of equations on calculating proper box volume and port dimensions and speaker placement. And I used some of that information as loose guidelines, but I pretty much decided to do my own thing. So if you're an audiophile or a speaker building expert, you might want to look away. Though, spoiler alert, I think they sound pretty good. I'm not going to go too much into the actual speaker building specifics because I know I'm probably not following some of the rules. But if you're interested in that kind of stuff, check out a channel called Kirby Meets Audio. He makes great speakers and great videos too, and I've learned a ton from his stuff. All right, so let's get into it. I had a pretty clear idea of what I wanted to do from the beginning. So I started out by breaking down a sheet of three quarter inch thick MDF into all my individual panels. And I'll try to just say this once, but I absolutely hate working with MDF, but at the same time, I love it. It's so easy to work with, but the amount of dust it creates is inconceivable. Now, because of the shape of the box, I needed to cut bevels onto the ends of three of the panels. Once I had all of the bevels cut and the panels fitting properly, I just trimmed everything to proper width and glued it all up. I then started to work on the front and back panels. So I cut a rabbit into both sides of the boxes, then worked on one panel to get it fitting really nicely. Once I had that one fitting perfectly, I then made three more using that first one as my template. With those done, I finished up the boxes by rounding over the top edges, one of which I could do with a round over bit and the other had to be done by hand.
You can also see in those shots that I had drilled a hole onto one side of each box, and that's because I'm building a ported speaker box, which basically just means that there is a hole where air can escape when the speaker is working. Okay, so at this point, I think old Tommy Bahama here was back from vacation. So I put him to work on a couple things. First was to cut the speaker ports onto the front panels. And I did these in a way that the speaker sat flush with the front panel because I would be adding a decorative walnut front on top of that. And I designed the speaker port cuts completely with Inventables online software Easel. I find that Easel really shines with simple stuff like this. So if you haven't used Easel before, click the link in the description to check it out. I then put Greg to work cutting the parts for the port tube. I decided to do it like this because I wanted the port tube to be completely integrated and fluid with the box. And I needed to have all of these tight inside curves to make it look like that. So this was really the best way that I figured out to get this look. With that, the boxes were done as far as fabrication, so I turned my attention to the walnut fronts. And once again, I started with having Greg cut the speaker openings. Now, I know speakers are rarely set right next to each other, but I wanted to carve something into the fronts that was a continuous image but would also make sense when the speakers were separated. So I went with a version of a drawing that I did in my one semester of art in college. Let me show you. And I did it on a guitar because that's what you do in art school. This was also a good excuse to try out an engraving bit that I got from Bits and Bits Company. I used a 45 degree V bit. This was my first time using it and there was some pretty fine detail in the carving and it worked great. If you're looking for some great CNC or router bits, check out bitsbits.com and enter my discount code for 15% off. So with the fronts completely carved, that was a wrap on Greg for this one. I then went to work on rough cutting, then flush trimming the walnut fronts to fit the boxes. I ran into a couple snags here. First, I couldn't flush trim along the edge where the port tube was. So I had to trim that bit on the table saw. And B, I realized I asked Greg to cut the tweeter opening slightly too small. That was my fault. So if I ever need to increase an opening by just a bit, I take a flush trim bit and put a slightly smaller bearing on top. And this will essentially give me a 1 16th rabbit around the entire opening. I then replace the bearing with the standard size for flush trimming and trim the excess. 
With that taken care of, I could then add all of the edge details to the fronts, which were roundovers and a heavy chamfer for the main speaker. And finally, the last part before wiring everything up was filling and sanding the boxes to get them ready for paint. And this was by far my least favorite part. I used some Bondo filler to try and get the boxes as smooth as possible because I wanted to use a glossy paint. And also with the amount of exposed MDF edge, I knew I needed to do something to get the paint to go on properly. It's not quite as smooth as I would have liked. I probably should have just spent more time on it. Of course, with more practice, I'm sure I could get better results, but I might just leave the bodywork and paint for the car guys. I'm not trying to be Danny Zuko here. But with the boxes now painted, I could get everything wired up and installed. This was pretty straightforward if you've ever done any sort of wiring. There are only four components in each speaker that need to be wired together. The audio signal first comes in to the cable jacks on the back of the box. Those are then wired to a crossover which splits a single audio signal into two parts and from there the crossover is then wired to both the woofer and the tweeter. I used a 1 inch tweeter from Dayton Audio and a 7 inch cone woofer. Oh sorry, not that cone woofer. There we go, that's the one. So when wiring up something like this, you have to be a little strategic. So I first soldered wires onto both speakers as well as the rear cable jacks. Then from there, I could install everything into the front and back panels. I then wired the speakers to the crossover. So now with my front panel with speakers and crossover all connected, I could install the front panel into the box. I can then wire the rear cable jacks to the crossover and close up the rear panel. Okay, home stretch now. The last thing to do was install the walnut fronts and I did this with some magnets. I wanted to be able to easily remove these in case I needed to get to the speakers for some reason. these are speakers after all so I think we need a little audio test cue the royalty free music all right so there you go 
I am pumped with how these came out and they sound great. I definitely wish the paint had come out better, but that's how it goes. Really not bad for shop speakers. And projects like these are all about experimenting and trying new things, so it was a success with that. Big thanks to Inventables and my X-Carve Greg for making this one go really smoothly. And thanks to Bits and Bits Company for the CNC and router bits. Links to both of them and a whole bunch more in the description, so check it all out. And of course, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed this one. And until next time, I have to mention again that working with MDF sucks but it makes it all worth it when your speakers sound like a million bucks. To my ear, at least.